So there is no money, there is no first thing, there is, in fact, no development. So the question is, what happens in space with that? So I've, I've chosen a few, um, few good uh, examples of an islands that have a problem across the Mediterranean. So as we know, Italy is <coughs> But unfortunately, due to unplanned development, they, they got uh, ruined. Also, if we go to Greece, and I, I worked there, um, Greece has uh, big issues uh, defined by the government. They're trying to fight it uh, against the mechanization of the shore. So they have some uh, linear strip due to shore that, that is devastating the event of the area. Of course, as you know, in your country there is a problem with, there is a plan, everything is planned, but there is a problem with literalization and urbanization. So, in the end, when we go to my country, we still have a space, a free space, we still have identity. But unfortunately, all of these bad influences are already taking place there. So, if if we go back, okay, this is bad, but the space must grow, and we have some issues in space growth. But so let's go back, life is good. If we look at the global scale, we must notice that tourism is one or is the largest and the fastest growing industry in the world. And it is going really it is going really increasingly important because of the source of income, the source of employment and wealth, and many countries depend on tourism. So if we go globally, international tourism uh, now accounts for a larger share of foreign exchange residents and export earnings than, can, than any other country in the world, than any other industry in the world. So if you look at these numbers, we can see that tourism grows exponentially. It is a progress of its own. <coughs> so, and also, I have something else to say. Okay, we have some continuous growth, but we have also something that is emergence of new tourist sites. If we look at the example, oops, I, I do apologize, I didn't translate it to English. The first one is Europe, uh, then America, Middle East, Asia and Pacific, and the last one is Africa. So, if you look at Asia and Pacific area, and we uh, look at this line, it is growing, it is exponentially growing, and if we look at the numbers, they are also growing. So, there is emergence of new tourism destinations, and competitiveness is rising. So, today, for a destination to be there, to be able to compete, it must be globally competitive. But there is something else also important, and that is locally instinctive and recognizable. I would say that special features of attractions and spatial recognition characteristics of tourist destinations are the benefits underlying the tourism supply and demand. In one way, if we look at tourism trends today, what is happening? How does the world grow? There are no borders anymore. There are no limits. More or less, in this area, there are no big wars. So the market is open. You, we have, we live in a society that is um, wireless connected, that, that we have internet, that we have every possibility to check any of the destinations we are interested in. And to be able to compete in that, you have to be special. You have to have something of your own, the attraction of your own, to compete with others, for tourists to be interested. So, in that way, also, today we live in, um, I would say, three minutes society or uh, attention span is really short. So if you don't find something interesting, in short time notice, you won't go there. And so this local distinct and recognizable is really important to be connected with tourism. But let's go back to, to what happens before. Um, I'm showing you now here um, example of one of the important tourist destinations in Croatia is Island Park and the development of this island 
um, has changed definitely, it is wrong, it is invisible. So if we have development, we must do something to control it. So how to control it? I would say tourism planning. But what is tourism planning? If you look at these examples, this is a uh, um, computer simulation of how a tourism planning machine could allow the development in one of the Greek islands and also this one. I don't know. <laughs> um, so, if we look at this, uh, what do we see here? We see here a congestion, building congestion. This is not anymore a beautiful scenery that can attract somebody. And because, of, but, but this is something that a uh, tourism planning machine that is law, pro, uh, that is introduced by government, allows. And why? So, tourism planning in one way can be bad. How come? Let's go to the definition of tourism planning. So, main purpose of it is to generate economic benefits of foreign exchange earnings, income, employment, government revenues, and to serve as a catalyst for development of other economic sectors, to help pay and justify infrastructure that also serves general community and economic needs. Okay, so after all of that, economic, economic, we also go there that it says that it should also <coughs> justify applying measures for environmental and cultural heritage conservation for which resources otherwise might not be available. So we have a plan, but tourism planning is oriented in an economic income, but it should also control the problems in the space. So, what, what is happening? Why is the problem? The problem is focus primarily on the parts of the tourism rather than you know, tourism as a whole. So as we know, tourism is really multi or interdisciplinary area with so many professions consulting it. So if we pick just one and we <coughs> narrow the view it from just one, then we have a problem because it must be uh, integrated developed. So, what should we do? So, to optimize the benefits of tourism and to prevent or at least mitigate any problems, we need a good planning and careful management. And what does it mean? It means that planning for tourism is important as is planning for any type of development in order for it to be successful and not to create problems. And now here we are talking about special problems. So if we go to this chart, I'll just like to introduce you to the trends of tourism planning. So we have like five different trends and each of the trends consists of something else. If you look at the, the, the first year, do you know what is the period that uh, in that year, 1850, what happened that time? One thing was over and another thing was starting. What is important in tourism? Uh, what is the reason the tourism began? How? The mean? Uh, I would say transport. So that, does it uh, remind you of something? Sorry. So does it remind you of something? What, what happened in that period? What do you think? Due to transport, due to power, electricity. Industrial revolution. Yes. Industrial revolution, first and second, and health. It was the thing that initiated modern tourism or the ways of the modern tourism. So, transport, cheap transport. That is the, the first way and also urbanization that came with first industrial revolution. So there are free people who have means to travel. And that is the start. So in that first period, the tourism was thought as good. <coughs> so, and from this first period comes boosterism. 
Uh, I would say, okay, please stop. <laughs> that boosterism is a mean of not plan. It was thought that tourism is good. So every bad influence from tourism is overwhelmed with a good influence. So the main aim of boosterism is to attract as many tourists as possible. Okay, but when we go back, we can see that 1890s were still the years when we were see only just the good from the tourism. And that is the time when we got economic tradition. So, what's that? We talked about it earlier. So, it implies economic growth and development. And of course, it is based in the tourist industry. So, what is the aim? The aim is only to increase an economic profit. Okay, but that time has changed. So, we are still in period when we see tourism as panacea for all the problems due to government, to social problems, employment, everything. And then, in, let us say, in 80s, 70s or 80s, they were seeing some problems. So from that time, more or less, community planning comes. So, what do they say? Okay, tourism is not so benign. It has some negative social, cultural, economic, and environmental impacts. Why? Because there are locals that live in a place and there is a big amount of tourists coming here. If we look at, you all know, Costa Iberica problem. There are now problems of cities of growth because the locals have gone away because their way of life was interrupted. So this community planning is oriented to in, involve all stakeholders in tourism planning. And that means also local government by the locals through surveys and many other means. So the aim is by meeting the needs of the local community also meets the needs of tourists. So they say if the local community is happy how the tourism is planned, if they, they are in it, then they will welcome their tourists and they will be able to control it. So this is like a positive way of social thinking. But that, that wasn't enough, of course. Because in time, tourism produced something that, that is impossible to get better, and that is environmental problems. So if we go in that 80s, 70s, and 90s, those were the times when we started thinking about our future, and those were the times in sustainability is part. So what is sustainable development? By look at definition, as a basic definition of sustainable development, it says that the idea of the ecological and social constraints that allow the ability of the environment to meet the current and future needs. That should be the essence of sustainable development. What does it mean? The aim is to provide a permanent and secure existence which reduces the depletion of resources, environmental degradation, cultural disruption, and social instability. So, they are taking care about the whole package, what is happening. That they are trying to provide a better future. So we have to think about the future, not just thinking about town and local interests, and not just thinking about money income, not, not just thinking about close development, but long term, what will happen, what will change. And, and in the end, we have something that is special for interviewing tourism plan. We started in the 90s, in the 1890s, but the problem was that in that period of time, it was nearly oriented to uh, marking or controlling or annotating the things from boosterism and economic. It, it gave like it was approval for economic gain. So it was based, um, the, the real uh, concept was based just on the uh, building of the hotels. So the design, the choosing the place, and, and building and compensating it. Afterwards, 
adhere to everything else that I said and adhere to this last um, way of environmental protection and thinking, spatial planning must be based on consideration of the renewability of natural resources. Uh, yeah, sorry. Spatial interaction, spatial organization, planning and development, environmental issues, and that is important, are given precedence over economic issues. So let us think about space and, and environment, and I think about it and plan it more than we plan economic issues. So the idea is to ensure optimum use of space. Okay, so when I put it this way, we would say that special planning could be important. It could congest all of these inputs in it. It shouldn't be just a way of marking economical strategies of planning into a plan, but also thinking by itself and controlling all the others, so in environmental and in spatial issues. Because without space, we don't have no tourism. Okay, so to sustain that what we want, we don't want to prevent tourism. We don't want to put special planning as a restriction. We just want to not even to control it, to, to submerge it in one way, to direct it. So to do to do that or to sustain long-term quality level of tourism growth. And by that means provide economic gain also, but economic gain that does not create a negative impact on the tourist area, we need something, we need to use adopt a special planning tool. And by that, I will be now introducing you tourism carrying capacity as a tool who can say how much tourism activity is acceptable, who might determine the limits of tourism activities for the purpose of sustainable tourism planning. So what is that? Carry capacity. But by its origin and its initial concept, which started a long time ago, it was a fact um, way or a mean to determine the capacity of ship's cargo. So it was quite technical. Uh, and it was just how much the or how many something the ship can carry. It was it. And later, in the 19th century, it was spread over all to measure all of the main main objects or systems um, depending to their mechanical engineering characteristics, so how much of something they can carry. So it had only a pure physical aspect. The, the area, how much you can carry, and it is controlled by numbers, so it is quantitative method. Afterwards, in the 70s, 1870s, it was used <coughs> the same expression was used in biology and had the same meaning to sub it would define the subject of capacity transmission for transportation. So maybe what it means. It means that a, we wanted to know how much something some animal can carry, so it was used for that. But soon uh, it was changed to measure a range of productivity. And that would be so a switch. Instead of how much of something an animal can carry, it became important how many of the animals can the environment consist in long terms. So by definition, a biological process shows maximum population of a given species that can be supported indefinitely in the defined habitat without permanently impairing the productivity of that habitat. So now, first we have just the physical, the area impact. Now we have it also. But now we have something else, and that is biological aspect. And that is really important because we want to know how many animals can be supported in an area and have them for a long time. Okay, and now, but we still have just the quantitative measures in numbers. That concept grew in the 60s into a recreational concept. Um, it was directly drawn 
to maintain the na of natural conditions in order to preserve and protect natural parks. Why? Because this is the period when there are many visitors in the parks and the parks are going down, they, they are losing their originality, so they want <coughs> to protect them and they want to protect them in a way by controlling the number of visitors. So this was the first idea. But if we put carrying capacity just um, in human conditions and just control the numbers, it is impossible. So they had to change it. Instead of just this physical and ecological aspect, they had to implant social physio physiological aspect. And, and that means that they wanted to know how the tourists react. Are they happy with the number of the tourists seeing around? So the, the way of which they control that is by qualitative measures. And that should be, it is called crowding or, or aspect of how many people can sustain on an area within the good experience of the visitors. Or the other way, by also service. So they gave the visitors service and they said that how happy are they uh, pleased with the attraction they wanted to visit because of the other people congested it or not. So the definition would be that it is a characteristic of the recreational use that may be supported in a given time period in the area developed to a certain level without causing excessive damage to physical surroundings or the experience and satisfaction of this. So now, it is not just important how many, it is always also important how it is there and how the victims are satisfied. But this concept has grown and it's changed and in the 90s it became a vision or a planning concept or, or a method how to plan this and how to manage the, these resources how to uh, satisfy everybody, so how to satisfy the governmental income, how to satisfy the, the nature, the environmental system, and how to satisfy the visitors in the end. So, if, if from that point of view, it changed to a tourism concept. Although we've seen that the concept uh, was introduced a very long time ago, it was introduced in tourism just in the 90s, due to that what I said, that in the 90s um, real good care about the environment started and sustainable development uh, started. So in, having in mind that, they adopted the concept in a way to uh, determine um, tourist capacities according to the level of protection of nature and the type of tourist activities. So, it, it, at first, it was still based on numbers. So, how many people can, or how many tourists can be found there uh, without causing any problems in social, physical, uh, I can show you. So, th th this would be uh, the definition. So, the maximum number of people that can visit a tourist destination at the same time without causing destruction in the physical, economical, and social cultural environment and an acceptable decrease in the quality of visitors' attraction. So for the first time, they tried to put the whole package in it. That there was just one problem in that, uh, and that was controlling the number of tourists. And that, that, that was a quite problematic in a way. So instead of um, controlling the carrying capacity just, just by the numbers, they introduced it as a planning tool to reduce or avoid all the negative impacts. So it became an analytical concept. It is like a planning tool that harmonizes with the principles of sustainability, which is important, and with scenarios of growth and development that are re results from the analysis. The numbers are still there, but the numbers are just controlling aspects or standards that must be achieved. So now, uh, this concept has become a really important 
quantitative and qualitative concept for taking care of tourism planning. But how, how does it, how, how can it be put into as a spatial planning concept? So we, we must change the aspect. Instead of maximum number of people, we don't want to know the maximum number of people just as a controlling aspect. We want to know the maximum acceptable level of tourism development in an area because this is the area we can control as a special planners. So, in that way, um, the concept of tourism carrying capacity can be used as an analytic concept uh, and decision-making concept on measures to, to control that growth and development of tourism in terms of intrusion into space and its features or as a planning scenario. So the scenario which defines the maximum acceptable level of tourism spatial development. So in that way, it can be applied to large uh, and demanding geographic area as an island, town, or whole region, because the concept due to numbers is really difficult to calculate on a great uh, area, uh, an area greater than a part. So if we go down, it is still based on the capability of resources and infrastructure. So it can be in mean controlled by, by this. These are the numbers that we are showing. So if we translate it into mathematical language, we can say it is a function. Uh, it is a function of optimal space use due to capabilities and the limitations of the specific factors of analyzed area in a given period of time and under the influence of specific spatial values. Um, in tourism, so time and space are really important things because everything is progressed in the time and it happens, <coughs> the results are seen in space. So we need to take care about that too. <coughs> so how does the concept work? How does the spatial planning work? We have some steps in main plans, in main master plans. So um, in my country, when we make a master plan of an area, um, we have a law that says in which way the master plan should be done. Uh, but this law doesn't oblige that it should be done just like that, that this is must have. It, 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 it allows also additional <coughs> values. So, carrying capacity can be an addition to the usual plan. What is the difference? The difference is in spatial planning, it's a linear process. You have steps and you follow one step under, after another, as you know. But carrying capacity is not limited to the time and is not limited to the verticality of the baking plan. It's a circular process and this is the difference because it has to be flexible. It, it, I was talking about trends. Tourism trends are changeable. They're changeable in time. They're, they're changing progressively. So if you want to stay in the game, you need, be, you need to be flexible. So there are three basic steps, but also they are following one another. They are also parallel in time and progress. So it should be evaluation. So we must know what we are dealing with. If we have an area, we must evaluate it or valorize it. So how do we do? First of all, we do the analysis. Analysis and what is important. What is important, we said that the main attractions are important. So let's analyze the special characteristics. Okay, by that, we after that we deter make determination of the key location specific. Factors. And this is important. So these are the factors or attractions that are important to protect in one way. They are important to take, be taken care of for a long time period because these attractions are the reasons for people to come to have tourism. And by that means, we need to use a special planning model based on these attractions or factors. So at the same time, there is a planning going on because we need to set objectives at first. 
But these objectives cannot be just from our profession. The objectives must be um, great, so they must be multidimensional. The objectives must be from all involved um, section that I said before. So that they have to have uh, economical inputs, we have to have social inputs, infrastructural inputs. So, so many, uh, all of those inputs, so that there should be something like um, um, interdisciplinary flag in this way. So if we can focus to the objectives, after that, we can, this is our part, these objectives must meet the space. And how do they do that? By indication of possibilities or limitations of the space. So we can say, okay, these are the things that are able to happen, and these are the things that we cannot provide, or we should limit it. And afterwards, we do planning scenarios. Planning scenarios, again, as objectives, are interdisciplinary. They are not made just by spatial plans, because it is impossible, then we will be also viewing just one aspect of tourism. And in the end, what is capacity? So the, these are the things that are going parallelly. And of course, capacity is built with numbers. We have to have some kind of numbers. Because some kind of numbers are able to, to be easier to control. Because just valorization um, can be a one-way subject in a way. Uh, because a um, way uh, that government and the way that locals and the way the planners see things sometimes can be different. So we, we need to listen to all of them in putting uh, scenarios. So the scenarios can say the level of the development that is allowed, but it, we as a, as a profession need to be on the top so we can control that in space. But the other professions have their own mind and also they have also their, their own calculations. So this is something that is controlling our way. And this is applying the norms and criteria. And what is important by norms and criteria is that they can be site specific. We cannot apply the same norms at different types of spaces. So it is easy to provide norms for closed or indoor spaces. But when we try to provide norms for outdoor spaces, it's quite difficult. But there should be some norms from that to that. For example, there are norms for um, relation between how many of tourists and how many of locals can be there. And my scientists got that the number should be 1 to 1.4. So, you know, th th this, this it, it cannot be put everywhere. You cannot put that number of a small island. You cannot put that number of different city because the place is different and the capability of an island, the capability of a big city is totally different. The island can have one hotel and that's it. How can you overwhelm? So you you pressure the people to to, the, to go away, to live there, and that becomes a, a touristic island. That way it, it grows down. So the criteria is also important. And this should be the process how we do it. In the conclusion, determining the determining tourism carrying capacity, it requires good analysis of pertinent factors, analyzing peculiarities and spatial features of each tourist destination, and characteristics, of course, of tourist activities. So the application of tourism carrying capacity is focused on appropriate scenario. So there is also one problem with economic care capacity. If you look at through numbers and through incomes, the limitation borders can be from this to there. And sometimes this higher level is already not good. So we shouldn't maximize from this to there. We should say, OK, this is optimal. So we narrow down the things. And of course, we need uh, certain restrictions. Unfortunately, restrictions are always heard as a bad, as a bad aspect. But in one way, some restrictions must be there, and they must be provided by the law and by the government. But they shouldn't be um, harmful. 
they should, they should be harmful, they shouldn't be uh, strict and repressive. And in the end, the decisions must be set in a way that local capability of tourist destinations can successfully deal with scenarios of spatial development. And these scenarios are can always be different. They should be basically from restricted to affirmative one, but it differs to the analysis of the space. Okay, so what happens then? I would say that tourism carrying capacity can become a central spatial planning tool for planning and management of tourism. Especially for sensitive destinations that should be protected and must face increasing pressures on tourism activities. I would say that there are two means of using care of One mean is using it in a way uh, on a region that is already touristic um, or developed, let's say like that, as a controlling aspect to say how much of that they should reduce or in, in other way when it's underdeveloped how much they can maximally uh, develop up. But in another way, it could be also used in any area because most of most of the areas they all deal with any kind of tourism. And tourism can be good. It can be good but it, it is if it's guided in a good way. So I think that this concept could use be useful. Okay, so I would like to thank you and I would say that every start is difficult and it must start with singles.